All right, in today's adaptogen video, let's talk about maca. So maca is actually a root vegetable. It is primarily from the Andes and especially used in Peru. It's traditionally used for fertility in both people and in livestock, actually. Fun fact. And because it's also a food, it's generally considered safe for most people. Again, if you're pregnant, always check with your doctor first. Um, but most studies that have used maca have used it in a four-month period or 12 weeks in dosages of about three grams daily. And again, because it is a food, you see kind of a higher dosage. The part of maca you want to be using is the root. And there are different types. There's like a yellow, a black, and a red. Now, in going through the research, some studies are conflicting on is black better for this or red better for that. What I have seen is red is generally more for the fertility side of things. And the black is the rarest, so I did not see a lot of studies about that. But the yellow and the red are both used also as a, for their adaptogenic properties, meaning they're helping with your energy, helping with concentration, or helping with focus. Now, again, you want to be using the root. And because you generally are using, you know, gram dosages daily, um, a powder is usually the route most people go. It's just a lot easier than swallowing three grams worth of capsule. I'm not really seeing a lot of liquid extract, um, although I have seen some extracts in that are extracted out in, out in alcohol, but they're less common than the powder version. Now, in most of the preparations that are dealing with kind of concentration, energy, or stamina, um, you are extracting out the fatty acids. I don't know if I'm going to butcher this, but it's usually the macanes, the, the, maca, the macaines or the macamides that are usually the kind of the active ingredient or the constituent that they're extracting out in these standard uh, extractions. Now it's a little bit more complicated, but let me simplify kind of what we're talking about with these macaenes and macamides. Um, they are thought to actually work on the endocannabinoid system, which is kind of same system that uh, THC and CBD are acting on. This whole system interacts with your APA, HPA axis and has to do with regulating different types of neurotransmitters, um, neurotransmitters like GABA, which is thought to have the kind of mood enhancing effects that you can see with maca. I will say a lot of the research is still in mice models and there's not a ton of great research out there about maca, but I think over the last 20 years, it's kind of one of the adaptogens or herbs that has really kind of blown up as far as um, its popularity. So I think more studies are on the way or more quality, higher quality studies, I should say. Um, like many adaptogens, maca is found to be anti-inflammatory. It is also an antioxidant. It has been shown to reduce the effects of oxidative stress. And again, it, in its interaction with the HPA axis, it has been shown to uh, change levels of the corticoid steroids such as cortisol and cortisone. Now, maca is probably even better known for its, again, fertility effects because it's been used that way in traditional medicine for quite some time. Um, we do see in quite a few studies that it has an effect uh, it does have the uh, ability to kind of change hormone levels, especially when it comes to estrogen and testosterone in both males and females. And it's probably more studied um, as far as the effects of increasing um, spermatogenesis or kind of bringing up sperm count or sperm production in males. So because of that, it's often used to help with libido as, as well as sexual dysfunction and um, also kind of regulating hormones, uh, especially for women. Now, kind of real life example of, again, when would I ever pick maca or why would I use uh, maca in somebody's recommendations? Well, for me, I tend to use this herb when fatigue is a bigger kind of presenting factor. Of course, I generally will look at uh, hormone levels and kind of cortisol levels and we'll kind of add that in. I love to add this in in women who are also starting to lift weights as well. It seems, for whatever reason, seems to help with decreasing muscle fatigue um, or the DOMPS, the delayed onset muscle soreness um, that I see a lot in people who, you know, when you're starting to increase your resistance training. Um, and especially for those um, uh, clients who are really exhausted and their hormone levels are a little bit off. Of course, 
There's a lot of other factors that I look at, you know, looking at gut health first to make sure that that's on point. Um, but this is one of the times where I would think about or consider using maca. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions on this herb or any experience with this herb, leave them in the comments below. I love to interact with you in the comments. And please, if you found this helpful, give this video a thumbs up. Um, it helps other people find this information and find the channel. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when I post a new video next week. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.